Well, there are two talks uh, left in the session now. The first one will be by Shaban Khalil, uh, a bit more theoretical or um, to us uh, discussing models of new physics. And then the second talk would be by Yahya uh, uh, to us more experimental side. So Shaban, um, Shaban's talk will be on uh, physics beyond the sand model uh, in the Alice era. Uh, so please, uh, you can start now, Shaban. Thank you. Sure. Thank you for the invitation. I will share the screen and make it now for the screen. Uh, share the screen. What? Please ask the host to give you permission to record. I think you already recorded this, right? Close. Share the screen. Control L. Okay, you see my screen now? Um, um, I think it's hello? coming. It's coming. Okay, at least you hear me. Yeah, yeah we, we see have, you, but I think the, the, the PDF is uh, is locked in the corner somewhere. So. What, what is locked? It, it's a, the, you, you have to, uh, I think you have to share the specific application uh, of the PDF. So that, because right now, right now we only see the top. I of the PDF. The PDF. Yeah, so you should stop really? sharing and share screen again, and then choose, I don't know, maybe your desktop or something. This is share screen. Yeah, you can choose this. Yeah. Okay, we we'll see it now. You can see now. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So um, I can start. Yes. Thank you. Okay. As I said, thank you for the invitation, and uh, I am pleased to join uh, this meeting. And uh, uh, I know that the meeting has different topics and different. Uh, uh, background audience, so I will try to have very uh, simple and long introduction uh, than usual. Um, so, what's this? Okay, so um, the topics, as uh, Shaib said, uh, uh, physics beyond standard model in the LHC uh, LHC era, and uh, the outline of my talk. I will start as I promised. I will give some uh, rather uh, uh, long introduction to let everybody knows what we are talking about. So I will very introduce the standard model of particle physics. I know that we uh, heard the talks about standard model of cosmology maybe, but now standard model of particle physics. And in fact, there's a lot of you know, link and, uh, and uh, common uh, interesting points to, uh, in the two models. And then try to convince you that we have some evidence for physics beyond the standard model. And I will show you uh, uh, some direction and the potential uh, theories and direction for physics beyond the standard model. Uh, give you a couple of examples of this type of physics, super symmetry as one example, and also extending, extending the gauge group with some non-minimal gauge group and even super centrizing. And we have what's called the non-minimal super symmetry uh, as an, uh, another example. And I will try to show you how we can even provide examples and the candidates for dark matter in such models. Okay, let me start with the standard model. As I told you very briefly, standard model is well-known theory now, it's almost complete. In fact, it is based on the gauge century, uh, SU3 for the uh, strong interaction times SU2 for the weak interaction times U1 hybrid charge and the electromagnetism is combination of a last two uh, gauge symmetry SU2 cross U1. Standard model turns out to be an excellent experimental agreement. In fact, even more than what we ever expected and even Salam and Weinberg and Glashow expected when they proposed. 
Uh, the standard model uh, based on this uh, uh, gauge theories, so it has very simple uh, Lagrangian. Sometimes the people in, uh, try to make some joke and they write this is in components, so it looks like a couple of pages or something, but it is really quite simple Lagrangians and uh, beautiful theory, I guess. Based on the uh, gauge uh, interactions that I mentioned, and the matter is uh, described by um, either triplet under uh, SU3 and uh, the strong forces like the quarks, for example, or doublets quark left and the lepton left under SU2 with some specific hypercharge under U1. So for example, we have three generation leptons, left-handed neutrino electron, neutrino and immune, and also new, as tau neutrino is tau. This is the three families of the left-handed leptons. We have three families of uh, left-handed quarks, uh, uh, up, down, charm, strange, and the top and bottom. So this is, uh, this is the three families of the quark, left-handed. And then we have what's called right-handed or singlet fields under SU2 left. And this is uh, the quark uh, right-handed and uh, 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 instead uh, either uh, up sector or down sector uh, right-handed. Uh, there is no doublet, so U right and D right, uh, C right and S right, T right and B right, and so on. Electron uh, and the muon and the tau is kind of the charged leptons, right-handed, the charged lepton. And the no uh, right-handed, left uh, right-handed neutrino. So the neutrino only left-handed in this model. And the, as you see, it, uh, it appears in the left-handed doublets. So there is no left-handed uh, neutrino. And in fact, this is, was a very beautiful and a nice mistake uh, people did in the 1950s when they construct the standard model because they thought the standard are mass neutrinos are massless and therefore we should not introduce any right-handed neutrino to avoid mass you know, and let us build a model uh, like that. And this is what's good because if they assume right-handed neutrino, they started to think of doublet under uh, right-handed, and then we could have SU2 left cross SU2 right cross U1 hypercharge, for example. And then we will pass by the standard model and we go for complicated model, which is left-right model, which is one of the candles still for a physics beyond the standard model. But I think it was a fortunate that we start with this symbol model and to check all the uh, you know all the uh, prediction and all the ingredients that we are using first in symbol model so it was really historical a mistake but was very very interesting and very good mistake that we they did uh, the symmetry uh, of this SU3 cross SU2 cross U1, um, in fact, uh, SU3 for the, uh, for, the, uh, for the strong interaction where gluino, gluons are massless and the, the symmetry should remain exact, but weak interaction we know there's a short range of force and the gauge carriers W and Z should be massive. And there is no mass if the symmetry is exact. So the symmetry should really be broken somehow. And this is, was an issue and we need to break it in a very elegant way to uh, keep the theory is what we call it renormalizable, still consistent, we can compute and we can really have a prediction. So this is uh, done only by introducing scalar field, what we call it hex field, and try to extend the matter content or the content of the standard model with extra doublets, one doublet only, and there is no reason in the standard model why just one doublet, it's just the economical uh, uh, reason that we will use just one doublet. This phi scalar, so it's been zero and it has hypercharge one, it has a charged component, neutral component. This is the Lagrangian of the uh, scalar field and the potential V of phi as usual, it's mass term phi square and kind of quartic term lambda to phi to power four. Here is another trick that phi square, the mass term should be negative. So we wrote it like minus mu square. 
Why minus mu square? Because without this minus sign, we cannot get this potential. This what is known as a Mexican hat uh, potential require, in fact, the mass square to be negative. So one should start to ask, can we have mass square negative? This is tachyonic. Well, this is just bare mass. This is just the parameter in the potential is not the physical mass. However, yes, we agreed that need justification, need explanation. Why the, in the potential that we usually consider positive, now we should take it negative to make, make this kind of Mexican hat and to make the minima at phi or the stationary at phi equals zero is no longer minima, but maximum. And the field should drop to from phi equal zero to some value phi different from zero. And this is a true minima. And this phi different from zero is really broken spontaneously. And we generate masses for the gauge bosons of the SU2, F and U1 hypercharge. We have a Three, three, uh, three gauge boson in SU2 and one gauge boson in U1. So four, there is a three combination will be massive. Only one combination remains massless and this is identified as a photon, the, the, the gauge uh, carrier of the remaining century U1 electromagnetism. And this is really was a wonderful uh, result because this is showed that the electromagnetism is merged from the two uh, higher, high, higher scales uh, symmetry or interact. And this is showed that there is a kind of unification really between the weak interaction and the hypercharge that mix together and they give us the, uh, the electromagnetism. And this is what we call it partial unification as I will discuss later about this. Now also because of Higgs coupled with a fermion quark and leptons via the Yukawa interactions the equation that I wrote it here, usually we have doublets and the Higgs is doublet, so doublet, doublet should coupled with another singlet. So usually the Higgs are coupled with left-handed and right-handed. So when the Higgs get a vacuum expectation value, that the one, uh, the value that I showed here, V, which is a square root of mu squared, the, the negative mass squared essentially, uh, over lambda, is, this is a V, this is a vacuum expectation value. Now once if phi got a vex, it start to generate mass term for the quarks and leptons. This mass term is proportional to the vacuum energy of the Higgs times what we call the Yukawa couplings. And now we understood that the Higgs field is, a, is a responsible for generating the masses for the gauge bosons and the fermions and all the matter in our universe. And if you have no coupling with the Higgs, then you may remain massless like neutrinos or the, uh, the, the photon, for example. They are not massive, they have no interactions at all with the Higgs field. This is nice. And now we understand a little bit more information about the masses, apart from the, uh, you know, the mass was uh, missed and the remains uh, in special theory of relativity, we understood that the mass is a kind of energy and there is mass energy relation. But now we are saying that mass is really the vacuum energy of the scalar fields that break the weak interactions. And this is what we call the Higgs and Higgs mechanism. Obviously, no right-handed neutrino, then there is no Yukawa coupling for the left-handed, right-handed neutrino with the Higgs, and then we have massless neutrino. And this is what Glashow, Weinberg, and Salam, and even before that, tried to build the model uh, to give this important result at that time. Now we go for evidence for physics beyond the standard model. And the first evidence I already mentioned that the neutrino, uh, neutrinos are massive. And in fact, since they are massive, then it is clear that we need to uh, go beyond the standard model and find out how to generate mass for the neutrino. The solution is simple. Okay, just add right-handed neutrino. As we said before, uh, if there is right-handed neutrino, we could have a Yukawa coupling and then we could have a mass. This is true, but it's not that simple like that because right-handed neutrino is not like right-handed quarks or right-handed leptons. It's 
neutral. It's neutral under all gauge centuries that we have. You could have, once you add right-handed neutrino, to, to, to uh, build a kind of Lukao coupling like this one, you could allow also for mass term of the right-handed neutrino. You could have in the potential or in, La, in the Lagrangian, some mass term M, new right, new right. And this M is not protected by any century, is not uh, restricted by any scale. And it could be as large as you want. And this is makes a uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, difference and differentiation between the masses of the quarks and leptons and neutrino. Now we have uh, what's called the Majorana uh, the neutrino, mass of the neutrino, in, in addition to the usual Dirac uh, neutrino mass. Dirac neutrino mass or Dirac masses comes from the Kawa interaction, similar to other parts. But extra term comes M new right, we call the Majorana. And now this mass matrix could be like, you can look it at like two by two mass matrix and you diagonalize and you get one very light and one very heavy. And if you allow for M of the right hand neutrino to be rather heavy. And this is in fact was the way to explain why the neutrino is so light. It is almost massless as we were thinking and now it has turned out to be very light, less than one electron volt. So people introduce right-handed neutrino, but then right-handed neutrino at which scale we should consider and we have to adopt it such that the linear combinations to mass eigen, uh, to this gauge eigenstates give me mass eigenstates and one very heavy. And in fact, now this heavy right-handed neutrino how we can prop it, how we can check that this is really uh, physical uh, particles, not just you know, uh, input from our sides to explain the neutrino masses. So this is, will take us to, uh, to uh, extend the standard model uh, uh, matter uh, fields with one, at least one uh, fermionic uh, singlet. Another important evidence also the observations of the dark matter. Now, I think you are convinced from the previous talk that maybe uh, uh, most of astronomers and the cosmologists and also particle physicists believe that more than 95% of the mass of our universe are dark, non luminous matter. And this is either dark matter Dark matter, uh, according to the latest uh, observation by uh, Blank satellite, is about 25%. What this, what this matter is different, completely different from the matter that we discussed in the, uh, in the standard model. We need new source, new candidates for this. Uh, even this, is, this matter should be kind of non-baryonic, not from proton and neutrons that we, we are familiar with, non-baryonic dark matter. So from where this comes, it comes from some extension uh, of the standard model. And in fact, fortunately, most of the theory of particle physics uh, can provide us with different uh, examples and candidates. Uh, the, the dark matter evidence, I, I think for, at least for me, uh, there is no doubt we will try now still not now try and they are still trying to explain that this is maybe um, explained by modifying the generative gravity newton newton's law or generativity uh, but i think there is clear evidence that the standard model of uh, standard model of gravity and standard model of particle physics to explain. The observation confirmed by more than thousand spiral in, in more than thousand uh, spiral galaxies and this rotational curves give beautiful result to show that really uh, our halo should be filled by with some dark matter. Another evidence, maybe a little bit theoretical, but quite relevant and important as I told you, the Higgs and the vacuum expectation value of the Higgs is giving mass for, for all matters that we have in our universe, even the Higgs itself. 
because hex itself has a self coupling so it has a lambda phi 4 and when it gives a ver it get one uh, when the hex it gets ver so uh, this coupling can be uh, adjusted or arranged to be a mass term for m square phi square comes from uh, from that expression the mass will be given by essential square root lambda the coefficient uh, of the uh, of the phi to power four uh, self uh, self interacting coupling times the vacuum expectation value the vacuum expectation value is known now because we predicted uh, the mass of v w the mass of the z and this it turns out the v it should be of order 174 gv okay so it is is fixed it's essentially we know uh, to a very well uh, approximation now with mh is discovered at lhc of order 125 gv as i will discuss soon then you can calculate and predict and you find lambda and the lambda in fact it turns uh, turns out to be uh, of order 0.12 but to a point one two, this is at electroweak scale, around 100 GV or around W scale, Z scale, MH scale. And we know that the couplings are energy dependent. And if you explore the running of the coupling using normalization group equations, you can explore and to high scale and you try to find out the values of those couplings at high scale. The theory should be st uh, well behaved and stable uh, as we assumed that lambda should be positive to avoid any unbounded from below because lambda phi to power four, if lambda is negative, lambda, lambda phi to power four will take the potential to minus infinity essentially. And we were assuming lambda to be positive, and we got it at electroweak scale 0.12. But now, if you use your normalization group equation just within the standard model, you will find that the running of the gauge coupling may go to cross zero and it becomes a negative at some scale of or or at intermediate scale, God scales, electro uh, Planck scale, and so on. Sorry, so sorry to interrupt you, Shaban. Uh, but we, we will have to wind yes. up in another seven minutes. Only seven minutes. So I have yes. I have to I have to be much faster. Okay, okay, okay. I'm still in uh, second point in my talk. Anyway, okay. But this is another another problem that faced the the model and the construction of the model. So uh, as I said, uh, maybe someone say it's not important that high scale, but in fact no, because the universe started from very high energy and start to uh, cool down and get uh, the and the mass the the particle was. Mass Massless, and then the symmetry is broken at TV scale or electroweak scale, and then we got mass. So you need to be sure that the, the potential and the model is well established, as well as supplies it so that you can really have successful scenario. This is really require something to cover with the heads to push it a little bit up. Since I am I am late, so this is another evidence. The heads again is a make trouble for the standard model after we discovered the hex also uh, had native correction so in one loop corrections for the electron you got corrections of order log lambda so lambda could be 10 to 19 or 10 to 16 gv dot scales is still inside the log will give few percent as you can see however now the hex is not protected and in fact the correction of order lambda square and therefore delta mh could be something really of order god scale or more something 10 to 15 gv so you can imagine Imagine the three level of your hex is 100 GV. You make one loop corrections, which you should be small correction to the, the three level, you get 10 to 15 GV. This is called the hierarchy problem. We need to solve it by some new physics. Baryon asymmetry, motor antimatter is another issue that cannot be explained in the standard model, and we need physics to understand the model. There is plenty of other open questions, 
in the standard model that require new physics, like why we have this SU3 cross SU2 cross U1, we don't have just one simple group, this is partial unification, can we have just one unified theory for the all interaction? The minus sign of the mass and the potential of the hex and the electronic symmetry breaking that depend on this, how we can solve it and so on. Why we have three families and, uh, and, uh, and where is quantum, where is gravity? Gravity is, is not involved at all in the, uh, in the standard model and we are just focused on electromagnetism and the nuclear forces. Now, let me, although I have no time, but in half minutes, let me summarize this part about the standard model. Maybe we cannot go to beyond. At least we will have a message that standard model in our definition, it is really based on four dimension quantum field theory. So no five dimension, nothing uh, uh, exotic, just four dimensional quantum field theory, which is invariant under Lorentz and Poincaré symmetry. The local symmetry or the gauge symmetry is SU3 cross SU2 cross U1. The particle content is point particles. We have the quarks, we have the leptons, we have everything represented by point particles. And any relaxing for any of those definitions of the standard model, you, you, you make a new theory. Which we have no right-handed neutrino. We have just one hex doublet. We have no candidates for dark matter. We have no gravity in the standard model. Let me now go for the directions beyond the standard model. In fact, you could go by relaxing all any, any of those uh, definitions that I mentioned. You can extend the gauge group from three to one to something else, SU5 or 10, SU2 cross SU2 cross U1. You can go for hex sector for more than one hex doublet. And in fact, most of the theories that we consider contains more than hex doublets. You can extend the matter like adding right-handed neutrino or any other quarks and leptons. You could explain the mass difference between particles in the standard model by assuming some new symmetries called the flavor symmetry. You can extend the four dimension to extra dimension and this is will give you rich theories which can explain different things. You can extend Lorentz symmetry with non-bosonic um, uh, non or fermionic generators, this is called super symmetry, the one I was planning to discuss. You could include gravity and then you could have super gravity. You could relax as a condition of having point particles, although it, it creates troubles in the quantization, especially quantization of gravity. And you could have something like string theory. I saw in the questions or in the chat, someone is asking about theory of everything and if super string can be that theory, I would tell him, yes, it is a candidate, but still in the under construction is not yet complete. Supersymmetry in very, <laughs> very uh, quick. Sorry, Shaban, uh, I, I have to interrupt school. again. Uh, yes. we, we are really running out of time. Yes. Um, can I request you to please speed up? You finished? Yeah, I mean, it was, okay. <laughs> your okay. time is already uh, over, but okay. But I let, let me I, I didn't realize this, but okay, let me take just uh, one minute to ex give example of new physics beyond standard model, which is super symmetry. Super symmetry is a kind of symmetry which you relate fermions to boson. So if you have quark, then you create kind of new particles, is fermionic uh, super, super partners with uh, this is half spin half, this is will be spin zero, we call it S quark, electron with S electron, and so on. But this theory is wonderful because. Okay, of the uh, of the Higgs. So instead of having one loop which was creating the divergence, quadratic divergence, you have now another loop from the partners and in fact cancel exactly the quadratic divergence. And if supersymmetry is exact, it gives you just correction equal zero. And if you break supersymmetry, you should break it carefully as a story so that you generate only logarithmic like what we did. Supersymmetry also predict something about the Higgs mass. Ah, this, this plot, you know, remember the negative mass in the potential of the Higgs. Now in, in SUSY and in, in minimal supersymmetric version of the standard model, you start with positive mass. 
But due to the running from high scale, from SUSI scale to electric scale, one of them play the role of breaking the symmetry and creating Higgs mechanism. The SUSI also, or the MSSM, is really predicted the Higgs mass. The Higgs in the standard model is calculable with three level of order MZ and at one loop of that order, gauge coupling square. Everything is given by gauge coupling and top mass and soft uh, S-top square under the log. So if you calculate this, you find the prediction. And this is, to my knowledge, the only theory was making firm prediction for the Higgs mass to be less Sh than Sorry, Sh Sh Shaban? It Shaban? Is discovered Shaban? Yes, I'm really, I'm really sorry. We're we're already uh, 10, 15 minutes above schedule. You must stop now. Okay, I'm really sorry, okay. but we have to stop. Okay, okay. At least, at least I managed. At least I managed to show you that uh, one of the extension of the standard model, the SUSI, gave a prediction for the Higgs mass 130 GV, and we uh, discovered at LHC always 125 GV. Okay, th thank you. I think is thank a you. Of, I, I'm really sorry, but we're, we're above time, and the, the, the time was 20 minutes. So, okay. 